Yeah, these things right here, they're, they're, they can be intimidating, but they're not too bad to operate. You can learn from my mistakes. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So for the past three days, we've been working pretty hard on my new hardwood flooring that we installed not too long ago. And if you remember, we put the filler on in the last video. We started off with the drum sander and the edger. That's what we did the whole first day. And we went up in sandpaper grits from 36, 60 to 80, in that order on both machines. And we started with the drum sander and got the main areas of the floor and took all that filler off and flattened the floor. And then what the drum sander couldn't reach up against the edges, obviously that's where the edger comes in. And with that edge sander, we went around all the edges and got as close as we could to the wall, which is actually all the way up against the wall. That thing gets really close to the wall. And we feathered in the drum marks from our drum sander to try to make it look as smooth as possible. And I'll just tell you guys, I am not a hardwood flooring pro by any means a lot of you guys already know that so i didn't take the time to really explain how to do this because it's not my specialty and i don't want to steer anyone in the wrong direction but we did come back with a buff sander square buff to try to feather in the edges a little bit more to relieve that halo line from the scratch patterns of those first two machines and then after we did the square buff sander we came around with an orbital buff sander and just hit everything with a 100 grit screen to give it a really fine finish. A lot of people were saying we should have done a 120, but unfortunately the uh, place where we rented this stuff didn't have anything beyond 100 grit. And one other thing for the inside corners where we couldn't get in even with the edger, we just did that the old fashioned way by hand with scrapers and sandpaper. So now at this point on the floor, we're completely done with all the sanding and we're ready to get to the staining. We already vacuumed everything, everything is good to go. And this is the more interesting part that I wanted to share with you because I've had a lot of struggles trying to obtain the color that I want, which is just a pure natural, no finish look. And on white oak, that's really hard to achieve from what I've researched and also from my experiences earlier this morning. I just put a clear coat on and it darkened the floor way too much. It was not even clear. And I think I figured it out though. I did some research online. So we're gonna be mixing two products. I'm gonna go downstairs and show you that. And we're gonna start staining this floor. So hopefully everything goes well. We did some test runs and sanded them off. So I think we're good to go, but it's always a little nerve wracking when you're gonna put it all over the floor. And I don't, I don't wanna sand these floors again. So hopefully this goes well, but we'll go downstairs and check it out. All right, so here's the deal with this floor. You can see how it looks just naturally with nothing on it. This is just completely fresh sanded. I like the way this looks and I wanna keep it as close to this as possible. I can't get it exactly like that, but I can get pretty close to that. And the way we're gonna do that is by mixing two colors of stains. I've done some research online and I found that if you mix these two stains, you can get a really natural look on white oak. The blog that I found this on, I'll link it in the description in case you guys want to read it. But it was calling for half country white and half neutral to get a nice natural look on white oak. I tried that and it was a little too white for me. So we're doing one quarter country white and three quarters neutral. We got a five gallon bucket here, just brand new. And we have a lid for this too, so we could seal it off once we mix everything. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix everything in here for the job so it, it all matches. We're gonna need two gallons of this, so we're gonna just dump everything in here. And then I'm gonna just stir it up with a stir stick. And the colors, like I mentioned, were Country White. These are Duracell products and Neutral. So it's 101 and 110 for these colors. I'll link these in the description as well. So what we're gonna do, we'll just dump all the, um, the neutrals in first. And we got six neutrals and two country whites. So it's an exact quarter cut of this uh, mix here. So once we put this stain on, you guys are gonna see how good of a job we did on sanding these floors, or you're gonna see the exact opposite, whether we did a bad job. 
So now we're going to put the country white in here and it's going to drastically change the color here. You can see this color. It looks kind of like a sweet tea color. We're using this 10 inch lambskin applicator. It has a little uh, handle on it that threads into here, but unfortunately it's stripped out. So I'm just be doing this by hand. And when I put this stain on and wipe it off, you're probably going to laugh at me because it looks exactly pretty much how it looks right now. But we have to do that because like I mentioned, if we just put a clear coat on this, it darkens it to like kind of an amberish hue. So we, we definitely don't want that. And this is going to look super white when I put it on, but I'm going to wipe off most of it. So keep that in mind. And on this, it doesn't really matter if I work with the grain or not because I'm wiping everything off, but I'm just going to push it in there and get in all the grain and just do enough where I can work it and wipe it off without it drying. So about like that. And then I'm just, I got a ton of these rags and I'm just going to wipe it off. Wipe off all the excess. The reason I'm doing it in small sections like this too, and not like just doing a whole bunch is obviously if I did like half the room, I would have to walk on it and walk on wet stain. But the reason I'm doing it like this is because I don't want to leave it on there long enough for the white to dry. I don't want that white haze over it. I ju I'm just using that country white to keep it natural looking. I went to about this board and you can see it's pretty much, I mean, this is a little darker, but this is as close as I can get to this without it turning to like a reddish color. It's almost like I have to buff the finish in to get what I want. So there's our first section there done. Like I said, not much of a difference, but this is what we have to go through to get the look that I want. So I'm going to keep going with this thing and that's pretty much it. I'm going to be spreading the stain on and wiping off the excess. There's really nothing to it. So I'm going to get started. All right, quick update guys. I finished the first room, it took me about 30 minutes and you can see the line over here where I stopped. You can see stopped right there at the doorway. It's a little darker on there and this is the more natural color, but I still really like this color. So it's going good. This whole area should take me, I wanna say probably another two hours to do all this. Maybe a little bit longer because it is pretty late in the day and I am not wearing a respirator and that is not on purpose. I went to get some new filters for my respirator today and they're all sold out. So it's pretty unfortunate. All the face mask, everything is just gone off the shelves and we checked a few places. So I'm keeping the area ventilated, but it's just, just unfortunate. I don't have any filters. The ones that I do have smell worse than this. They're pretty much saturated in um, fumes from Ben Primer, which is horrible if you know what that is. But I'm gonna keep going here and try not to get a headache. I just wanna get this done tonight and we'll keep moving right along. All right, quick update for you guys on the floor. I just finished putting the last bit of the stain on and it looks good. I'm really happy with the way it came out and I'm gonna call it a day there. This stuff says it needs two hours to cure, but it's gonna have way longer than that because as you can see, the sun's already setting here and I'm gonna go ahead and be done for the day as far as the floor goes. But in the morning, we'll put the polyurethanes on and then we'll pick up there 
with that. So we're gonna be putting three coats of finish on top of our stain. The first two coats are gonna be this product right here. This is called Crystal Clear. It's kind of a cheaper polyurethane. It's a good product, I was told, but we're gonna be using this as a cheaper product for our two base coats. It's in a satin sheen, and it's a commercial wood floor finish, non-yellowing, all that good stuff, water-based. So since it's water-based, we're gonna have to work pretty quick with it. And I'm gonna show you guys how I'm doing this using that T-bar applicator or drag bar as some people call it. And again, this is by no means expert advice on how to do this. You know, the flooring guys who frequent this channel, you're probably gonna laugh at me. You've probably been laughing this whole video. But guess what, when you make your crown molding video, I'm gonna grab my popcorn. So uh, yeah, we'll get started here and I'll grab this and start putting this finish down and show you guys what I'm gonna do. Just basically spread this liquid all over the floor. I'll just go ahead and start pouring some of this out so I can spread it against the wall first and then we'll work with the grain and work ourselves out of this room. The guy at the flooring store told me to try not to lift this tool as much as possible to prevent air bubbles. So I'm gonna try to do that. So I'm trying to keep my wet edge obviously working out of the room. I think of this kind of like skim coating a wall. You have that wet line and then you kind of fade it out as you work in whatever direction you're working in. So I'm starting to run pretty thin on this stuff. I'm just gonna take it all the way over here. Another thing he told me, the guy at the flooring store, which is pretty much who I referenced for this, was to just drag this thing like this. Like I'm not sweeping with it and putting pressure even with two hands. I'm just dragging it with one hand and letting the applicator do the applicating. I'm gonna lift it up right there. Try to pull that back. Left a little thick over here in the middle, so I'm gonna come back and clean that up. And thankfully this room is pretty small. When I go out to the larger areas, I'm gonna probably have to work quicker than this to keep that wet edge. But this is a good little practice room. All right, as far as how much finish I'm putting on here, I'm putting a pretty good amount, a uh, pretty continuous amount is what I've learned just to keep it consistent. And that applicator will pull it all around so it's not like it's going to get wasted or absorb into the wood too much. And then as far as the technique that I've developed in the last five minutes, I basically just pull this across, trying to keep my wet edge in the direction I'm working in. You can see it kind of, that line right there is on the edge of my applicator. And then when I get to a wall where I can't really go anymore with the tool, kind of do this circle motion. And since this is on a swivel, I can turn it towards me, push against the wall, which will, uh, you know, fan, feather out that circle motion that I did, and then pull back in the other direction. Then when I get in this direction, I'm going to circle, swivel this thing, push to the wall, and then just keep going. That seems to work just perfect.
check it out this is what we're working with after one coat of that crystal clear in the satin polyurethane you can see that nice soft sheen coming in through there and i laid it on pretty thick so i'm, I'm really pleased with the way this came out just a nice durable coat and we're going to be doing three total so our next coat will be the exact same thing i'll spare showing you that because it's the exact same thing you just saw me do for applying it but in between the coats we're actually going to abrade it with a soft abrasion pad and what that's going to do is that's going to get any bubbles or maybe tiny loose pieces of debris out of this before we add the second and third coat so here's what that abrasion pad looks like it's kind of like a um, scotch bright material maybe not as coarse as that if you know what that is i'll show you up close what it looks like just a soft piece of fabric really and I was told this thing removes any air bubbles or loose pieces of tiny debris that may have gotten sealed in your first coat. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this on and we'll get started. And I will say there are some air bubbles because using that T-bar applicator definitely has a learning curve and I was not really prepared for it. And I finally figured out the little trick to operating this buffer to get it to go left and right. The trick is if you push down on it, it'll go to the left. So I'm pushing down on the handle. And if you pull up on it, it'll go to the right. And you, it's very slight, like I can do it one handed. So there's a going to the right and we can pull up and go to the left. So at this point, we have now put our first and second coat on, abraded both of them, and now we're ready to move on to our third and final coat, which is gonna be this product here. Duracell, Duraclear Max, commercial floor finish and a flat sheen. Don't really know if we're gonna like this yet, but I did see some samples at the flooring store, so they look good, and uh, we're about to find out if I like it or not. This is an extremely durable product in so much that it's a two-parter. You got part A and part B, and after you mix these two together, you only have six hours to work with them, which is plenty of time to get this done. So we'll go ahead and mix them together and then I'll just apply it how I did the other coats. Pretty basic there. So to mix this thing up properly, it says to shake this for 30 seconds. Then you pour the smaller part B into it and then you shake that combination up for 30 seconds. Let it sit for five minutes and then you can go ahead and apply it. So I'm gonna do that now. ahead and get started with this looks the same I'm guessing this goes here we go nice filter there so from here guys it's the same thing I'm just gonna dump this stuff out and drag it across so once again I'll spare you the uh, can, uh, repetitiveness on this and I'll get started all right guys I'm about halfway done with putting this polyurethane on and it's dry where I started here in here in this room where I showed you and I'm gonna show you this I'm really pleased with the way it came out come check this out it's just a nice flat sheen check that out It's just a real soft look. It's crazy. It even has like a soft feeling to it. And I'll try to put up a little side-by-side -side video of this sheen versus the satin that I showed you earlier from this same angle. And you guys can tell me which one you like better. But I'm definitely liking this flat floor finish. It looks more natural to me. It doesn't have that kind of plasticky look really really pleased with this i am very very pleased with the way this looks i'm going to keep going here i got a lot of this area to finish up hopefully i can get done while we still have some more sunlight so i can show you some of these sheens from more angles with the natural light i know that's kind of nerdy but flat floor finish for the win for me
are completely done. It's crazy. This was a ton of work. Unbelievable. But that's going to do it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for watching. And thanks for following me along on this process. I'm still learning this as I go. Hopefully you found this helpful and useful in some way. But I'm going to end it there. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.